Hi guys, today we're going to quickly review finding and listing factors. And the I can statement we're working on doesn't really go with this unit, but we are going to need to know about factors in order to continue learning about the distributive property. So the I can statement we're kind of working on is I can find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers less than or equal to 100. And for this lesson, we are focusing on the word factor. So what is a factor and how can I find them? Well, let's begin by looking at a short video about the cyber chase kids. They need to find their friend Icky, but unfortunately Manny is not much help. Let's watch as they try to crack Manny's code. saw that the cyber chase kids used rectangles to find the factors of 20 because when you're making a rectangle the factors are the length and the width so what are the length what are some other possible lengths and widths that we can use to make a rectangle with an area of 20 one rectangle that was mentioned was a 1 by 20. Because 1 times 20 makes 20, so a 1 by 20 rectangle would have an area of 20. Another rectangle was a 2 by 10. 
because 2 times 10 makes 20. Therefore, 2 and 10 are factors of 20. And the rectangle that worked for the CyberChase kids was a 4 by 5, because 4 times 5 makes 20. Now we're going to watch another short video of what happens when the CyberChase kids get to Hot Dog Hill. They find that Icky was actually locked inside. Let's watch how they use their knowledge of factors to break in and save their friend. Six aren't factors of 13, because there's one left over. Four and three aren't factors of 13 either. There's still a leftover. Did you sure the number is 13? I'm, I'm sorry, wrong number. Maybe it was 12. Hey, it was a long time ago. Okay, okay, let's try 12. Hey, check this out. If we take away this leftover, we have a 3 by 4 rectangle. And 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 and 4 are factors of 12. A 2 by 6 rectangle works too. No leftovers. And 2 times 6 is 12. 2 and 6. Got it. But that's only four numbers. We need 6. I've got it. 1 times 12 is 12. 1 and 12. Check. Look at that. 12 has three pairs of factors. Just what we're looking for. I'll plug them in. Call them off, Inez. 1 and 12. 2 and 6. 3 and 4. It worked. Yes! Let's take a closer look at a triangle with an area of 13. It didn't work for the Cyber Chase kids because they needed a number that had three factor pairs, and 13 didn't seem to have any. That's because there is only one answer to this question, a 1 by 13 rectangle. 13 has exactly two factors, 1 and 13, or one factor pair, 1 and 13. 13 is what we would call a prime number. And prime numbers have exactly two factors. So, can you think of any other prime numbers? Write a definition for prime numbers in your summary. Then, list at least two more prime numbers. You may need to pause the video to complete this, but when you're done writing in your WSQ, push play because we have a little more to talk about. In the work section of your WSQ, answer question one. What are the dimensions, length and width, of a rectangle or all of the possible rectangles with an area of 24. Again, pause the video, but when you're done completing number one in your WSQ, push play again. Now let's talk about listing factors. We're going to list all the factors of 30. We're going to begin with the smallest possible factor, which is 1. 1 is a factor of every whole number. Well, then I think to myself, 1 times what equals 30? 1 times 30 equals 30. Then I go on to 2, and I ask myself, 2 times what equals 30? And the answer is 15. Then I go on to 3, 
3 times what equals 30? 10. So I list 3 and 10. Notice how I'm listing these. 1 and 30 are partners and they're on the outside. 2 and 15 are partners and they come next. Then 3 and 10. So I'm making a rainbow with my factors. Now the next question I need to ask is, can 4 go into 30? 4 times what equals 30? Well, 4 does not evenly divide 30. So I can't use 4 in this rainbow to list all the factors of 30. So I move on to 5. Can 5 go into 30 evenly? And the answer is yes. 5 times 6 equals 30. Now if we'll look at this rainbow again, I'm, I'll notice that 5 and 6 come right after each other when I'm counting. So my next possible guess for factors of 30 would be 6. And si since 6 is already in my list, I can stop there because I know I've listed them all. Let's try another example. List all of the factors of 40. I start with 1. 1 times what gives me 40? 1 and 40. Then I go on to 2. 2 times what gives me 40? 2 and 20. Then I move on to 3. 3 times what gives me 40? Well, when I multiply 3 times any number, I won't get any other whole number. I won't get 40. 3 is not a factor of 40. So I move on to 4. 4 times what gives me 40? 4 times 10. Then I move on to 5. 5 times what number gives me 40? 5 times 8. Then I ask myself about 6. Is 6 a factor of 40? Is there any number I can multiply, any whole number I can multiply by 6 to get 40? The answer is no. So I move on to 7. Is there any number that I can multiply 7 by, any whole number that I can multiply 7 by to get 40? Again, my answer is no. So I move on to 8. But 8 is already on my rainbow. So I know I can stop because I have found all the possible factors of 40. Now it's your turn. In the work section of your WSQ, write the answers for numbers 2 and 3. You're going to list all of the factors of 64 and then list all of the factors of 100. This is the end of our video. You can go back and watch any portion of this video as many times as you need to. Don't forget your summary must have three pieces of information that you learned about factors. When you are done writing your summary, don't forget to write a question.